So as, as you just heard, we're going to be talking about to what extent is learning math worth it. It's definitely a question that has been addressed by multiple students, probably middle school, high school, maybe even in college or university, uh, with the sole purpose of identifying what properties of mathematics are actually rudimentary to sustaining life. In my concept, math has always been perceived and socialized as this boring field of knowledge with just obsolete concepts with have which have just no relation to or application to our real life, which incentivized me to not leave myself with unanswered questions and perform a survey with the use of statistics and mathematics uh, amongst 50 random students, uh, asking them what was their least favorite subject. These were the results I obtained. The blue portion is math. <laughs> so 56% of them, which is on the higher 20s, uh, answered math was their least favorite subject. And the next most hated subject is physics, which also relies absurdly on mathematics, which is also pretty curious. Now, most of us uh, have probably had a point where in life where math was not our thing, or maybe this is your moment in life. And well, we just perceive it as this field and don't really know uh, what its applications are and why we're learning it. So, well, maybe people here in the audience have explored this concept further. So let's have a show of hands. Where are the engineers? No, oh, any engineers in the room? Economists, doctors, medical doctors, no? Well, all of your professions, quite frankly, even if you're a painter or a singer, it might rely on math. So if you went into the STEM fields or one of the more uh, rationally aligned fields, this might look familiar. The Euler's number. Now, to anybody who isn't familiar with the notation, this will look like an absolute nightmare. Like, quite just reading it, it's quite difficult. A limit a sentence to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power just makes no sense as I blurt it out of my mouth. Which is the central problem I want to address. As a young advocate for excellence in education and solely as an individual who is passionate for mathematics. We are learning things like this, concepts like this, which are rudimentary to uh, multiple uh, fields of knowledge apart from mathematics uh, on this theoretical approach, when on the other hand, a much more philosophical uh, approach utilizing reasoning and logic, well, it's much more enjoyable and engaging. Uh, and this all happens thanks to um, the education process being connected directly to its tangent applications. So this number is approximately 2.718 if we round it up to three decimal places and it is a very important constant in mathematics, but it is not seen this way. If we just come back here to this limit, it's just seen as any other formula, just looks boring, looks complex, whatever. But actually, this number itself explains the very roots to exponential growth and decay, radioactive behavior by unstable atomic nucleuses, and the growth of investments due to interest rates, which at the end of the day are multiple processes on which finance and economics and chemistry and medicine depend on. But it remains unknown because we keep failing to acknowledge the virtues of mathematics due to the way we have been learning it and the way we have been perceiving it and the way it's being normalized in society. Where we see it as this distant field, just full of obsolete knowledge, which cannot be applied because it relies on the constant use of formulas and repetition, which just becomes boring and it becomes ex extremely demotivating for the student who's learning it. Now, in order to prove my point, let's make a little experiment. Suppose you just opened a new bank account and you were to put forth $1 of your money, of your income, to this bank account. That's the main assumption we've got to make in order to make this work. Now, next, and this assumption is going to be pretty hard to take in because it rarely happens, might be utopic, absurd. But suppose this bank was very generous and they're giving you 100% on, on your interest, on your return, which I know is completely uh, unapplicable 
and utopic, but just for the sake of the experiment, let's just bear with it. So, there's a type of interest called a compounding interest rate, uh, which means the interest is not paid and calculated all at once, but instead it's just split up into multiple recalculations and repayments uh, of the interest as well a proportion of the investment, from which we derive the following formula, suggesting that the future value of an investment equates its present value times one plus the interest rate over the number of compounds elevated to the number of compounds, which again, just looks like a, another nightmare who anybody who isn't familiar to the notation. But let's just bear with me, please, and it'll all make sense, I promise. So substituting 100%, which was our interest uh, for I, we get the following. And now let's just suppose that uh, this bank is just compounding the interest once. So it's all re just calculated and paid all at once, giving the following. Hence your return would be $2 which is just common sense because 100% of one is one and one plus one is two, right? So it's just something pretty straightforward. But then let's just make it even more interesting. How about two times, semesterly? One payment the first six months, another payment on the other six months, which substituting two for N in the formula, we get $2.25. That'll be your return if it's done twice. Now, how about 12 times, once a month? This is already starting to get uh, quite more complex, but just bear with me. If you substitute 12 in for n, well, it means that it, this process is repeated 12 times uh, throughout the year, once for each month. This would be your return, $2.61. How about every day of the year, 365? Substitute that in for n in the formula, $2.714. That's your return. And I can already see some of your faces already knowing where this is going. But how about every hour, or maybe every minute, every second, and we can just keep descending in orders of magnitude to derive the same conclusion. If you do this every hour, as in 24 hours in a day and 365 days a year, this will be your return, $2.718, which at the end of the day is just E dollars, as I had previously shown you. So notice how we have derived the same conclusion, the same information, the same knowledge, from a completely applied approach and a completely theoretical approach a few slides back. Now, I managed to hear a few giggles when I, I, I commented on the complexity of the formula, and that's just intrinsic to explaining my point. It looks complex, it looks boring, and it's thought this way. We are perceiving mathematics as just in this field, very distant to our society, who has no direct relationship to uh, well, society itself and our routinary processes and just uh, like a day-to-day -day context. But on the other hand, from the applied point of view, we managed to derive the following, from which I make the following statement, which was also partially made by a uh, famous and recognized mathematician Fourier a few centuries back. If you hated math in high school, if you hated math in college, if you hate math right now, it's okay. That's probably not because the field itself has problems within it, but because of the way you've learned it or perceived it otherwise. Uh, because essentially the way we're perceiving it is as this very distant field who has, which has no applications. Uh, but at the end of the day, this argument is completely disvirtued since we can actually see that from a theoretical point of view and an applied point of view, we have derived the same conclusion. Now, why am I making this talk? Because I used to be like this. I'm talking from experience here. I used to hate math. I just saw it as a subject. I had to pass for the sake of passing and not getting a failing grade in my report card. And this was not too long ago, actually three years back, this was my reality. Uh, but once I discovered this, uh, it's, it's universality as a field of knowledge, it's recursiveness, applicability, and objectivity in order to quantify things related to all other areas of knowledge, it became very aesthetic to me and that's why I developed the passion. And hence this talk is an invitation for you to do the same. Thanks.